a, a fascinating thing. There's a, a group representing right-wing preachers, and uh, they're they're making this pitch. It's called the National Religious Broadcasters, and and by preachers I mean the 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 multimillionaires and billionaires. You know, Pat Robertson's a billionaire, of course, who go on TV, or go on the radio, and pitch for money, and and you know talk about Jesus and 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 politics and stuff. And here's the problem. Back in uh, 1954, the United States Supreme Court ruled in Brown versus Board of Education that it is illegal to have racially, intentionally racially segregated schools in the United States and that school systems had to do something about this. Now, this immediately produced a, a campaign called Massive Resistance particularly across the South, but this was nationwide. And it got, this was, this was the beginning of Fred Koch, uh, Charles and David's father. Uh, this is what got Fred Koch into politics. Fred Koch was so outraged by that 1954 Supreme Court decision that, that white kids, uh, you know, had to go to school with black kids, God forbid, that he started pouring money into the John Birch Society and they put up billboards all over America. If you're old enough, you remember these things. They, this was throughout the late 50s and even the early 60s that said impeach Earl Warren and had a big American flag on it. And that was the John Birch Society. So what happened as a result of this uh, massive resistance campaign was with regard to churches was two things. Number one, a number of churches started whites only private schools. And they did this under the guise of religion, saying, hey, we're a church. We can, we can have any criteria we want for people to, you know, this was long before the Civil Rights Act of 1964, right? So it was still legal to discriminate as long as you weren't at public school. So, so you know, this was uh, Jerry Falwell's school and, you know, Liberty University. Bob Jones kind of pioneered it in the college area. But there were uh, literally hundreds of these, uh, they called them, you know, academies. Uh, all white Christian academies, literally hundreds of them around the United States that were started by churches, specifically to get around Brown v. Board, number one. And number two, these ministers started preaching from the pulpit about the evils of integration, about how, you know, the Bible is very clear that black people have the mark of, of um, uh, uh, you know, Cain. Yeah, it was Cain and Abel, right? And, and um, that, that, you know, Cain killed, you know, you know, Cain killed his brother Abel and God put a mark on him and that mark is being black and quack, quack, quack. And this was the, I mean, this is a, a shtick that goes way, way back, right? Uh, among white racists, white supremacist racists in particular. And they started preaching this stuff from the pulpit and talking about politics and how you have to elect these, you know, these racist, you know, the Strom Thurmonds of the world, the, you know, the, the, the George Wallaces of the world, the, the segregation now, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever uh, type of politicians. So Lyndon Johnson in 1954 introduced legislation in the United States Senate. Now at that time, that year, the Senate was controlled by Republicans. And the president of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower, was a Republican. Lyndon Johnson, of course, was a Democrat. But he got, a lot of, he got a lot of good stuff done, and he, and he worked with them. He worked with Republicans back then. There were some rational Republicans. And they passed an amendment. It was on a voice vote in the Senate, but it was damn near unanimous that any church that involves itself in political activity, that explicitly endorses a political campaign or a politician or talks about politics in the pulpit, loses their IRS tax exempt status. Now that tax exempt status is a big deal. It means that the guy who runs the church can live in a house that he doesn't have to pay property taxes on, <laughs> that the church can get a refund on any sales taxes that they pay throughout the year on everything they buy, that the church doesn't have to pay property taxes, that basically you and I are picking up the tab for all these things. And that as time went on, that, that these multimillionaire TV preachers that are represented in large part by the National Religious Broadcasters, this NRP group, that uh, they can even write off their private jets. So this would be a big deal. And what happened was around 2000, 
in the George W. 2001, 2002, with the George W. Bush administration, the, the IRS basically stopped enforcing this rule. And by 2016, in 2016, there were hundreds of complaints to the IRS of preachers preaching politics in the pulpit. One was investigated. No one was prosecuted. No one lost their tax exempt status. And it continues to this day. It's, it's now a normal part of going to church on Sunday if you're in, in these evangelical churches is hearing a rant about the evils of Kamala Harris or the wonders of Donald Trump. So the National Religious Broadcasters now it has filed a lawsuit with a right-wing judge in Texas and a, a Trump-appointed tr judge uh, arguing that the Johnson Amendment from 1954 is actually a violation of their First Amendment right to free speech. Now, this is kind of bizarre if you think about it because nobody is saying you can't endorse people from the pulpit. All we're saying is if you endorse a politician from the pulpit, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, if you endorse a politician from the pulpit, we're not going to subsidize you anymore. We're not going to pay for your fire. We're not going to pay for your police. We're not going to pay for your public services. We're not going to pay your share of the roads and the highways and the byways and the airways and everything else. We're, we're, we're not going to subsidize you anymore. You're going to have to pay your damn taxes just like the rest of us if you want to do that. But the national religious broadcasters are saying, oh, no, 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 no. This is a, they're attempting to stifle free speech. And even though, and, you know, as you can see, this is an absurd argument. There's a very good chance it will succeed at, in Texas. There's a very good chance that when it goes to the Fifth Circuit, it will succeed there in the appeals court. And there's a very good chance that when it goes to the United States Supreme Court, the six right-wing Catholics on the court will say, well, of course, of course they're trying to stifle free speech. And we're going to see this thing knocked down. So number one, I wanted to just kind of wave the warning flag that this is coming. And it's probably, I mean, you know, it's probably going to work its way. It's, it's probably going to take two years to work its way up to the Supreme Court. It might only take one year. We'll see. But this is coming, number one. And number two, I wanted to encourage you to encourage your legislators, the two members of the House of Representatives who represent you, if you live anywhere in America except Washington, D.C., where you have Eleanor Holmes Norton, you have one person. Uh, and your two senators, although if you live in Washington, D.C., you have no senators, even though D.C. has a larger population than several of our states, larger population than Wyoming or Vermont. But nonetheless, if you, it, 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 to contact your members of Congress, and you can do it by calling them, which is probably the most efficient way to do it. You can also send them a postcard which doesn't have to go through the whole anthrax uh, filtering thing like letters do. Um, and the telephone number is 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. I'll say it again in a few minutes. Call them up and tell them that you want to see the Johnson Amendment enforced. You want the Internal Revenue Service to be put on notice that they have to start enforcing the damn law. Because I don't want to be subsidizing, and I don't think you want to be subsidizing, these right-wing churches that are preaching politics rather than religion. I have no problem with a church being nonprofit. I, I, frankly, I don't think they should be nonprofit because I think at the end of the year, if a church was a for-profit corporation and they used all of their money at the end of the year to support the poor, like Jesus said, they'd have no money left over to be taxed. There would be no, you pay no income tax if you make no profit. Any corporation. But, you know, I'm not going to fight that fight. I'm going to say, okay, let the churches be nonprofit as long as they don't mess with politics. But the minute that they start messing with politics, it's time to say, no, sorry, you pay your damn taxes like everybody else. So, again, the number for Congress is 202-224-3121. Write it down, stick it on your refrigerator. You call, that's the switchboard. And you just say, you know, hey, I live in Ohio. I'm not sure who my congressperson is, but uh, here's my address. They'll look it up for you. Give me your zip code. They'll tell you. And they'll connect you to their office. And, of course, you're two, Senate, you're two uh, United States senators. This is the Tom Hartman Program. J.D. Vance steps in it again. I'll tell you about that, and then I'll pick up your calls right after this. <laughs> 